um, another video tonight. I I was almost going to close my channel because really I'm um, I'm talking into the wind here because nobody seems to understand the crux of the problems that we're facing. So regarding this deficit commission, you know, by Obama, um, it's uh, who do you who do you think designed this commission and for, and for what purpose? Basically, it was designed to cut down um, uh, presumably the national deficit while basically screwing all ordinary and regular people over at the same time. The entire mass media mantra now is that we have to somehow get this deficit, deficit spending under control, but there is no mention of curtailing our warfare abroad, cutting down our defense budget. Cutting down defense budget is actually a misnomer. It is an imperial budget, to say the least. And um, when you look at these people on this deficit, deficit commission, uh, appointed by Obama, no less, uh, I mean, where are these people coming from? Basically, most of them come from the corporate and financial elite. There may be, you know, three or four members on that commission who are actually concerned about ordinary people, you know, uh, labor and so on. But they're basically in the minority. So, in essence, the the article by uh, Common Dreams, which incidentally is a is a liberal and progressive website, is in some in some way misplaced because they, even they do not understand the crux of the problem here. Basically, the article was entitled Pillage and Plunder Alert. Deficit Commission gets underway. Watch out, they're coming. After an election cycle in which Republicans work themselves up into a frenzy, in an attempt to convince voters that the deficit was the course was the source of our economic vows, the political elites and the banksters are coming for the middle class. So much, so much is that is true, okay, totally true. What better time to start a new publication, blah, 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 and then they go on, first go after the sick and the elderly. And this is precisely what is coming. And uh, this website, Common Dreams, has it exactly right when they point that out. But most people think that if uh, the elites uh, are in power and if their taxes aren't raised, then it will somehow trickle down to you folks, to you ordinary folks. You know, this hasn't worked for 30 years. Look at our economic picture. Wages have remained stagnant for the last 30 or 35 years for anyone employed, let alone the self-employed. So, high on the list of people who have to feel the pain are the sick and the elderly. The co-chairs want to increase cost sharing for Medicare. In other words, he wants senior co-pays to increase and deductibles to increase. Plus they cap a catastrophic, uh, plus a cap on catastrophic medical costs, which means that the severely ill and destitute are being thrown completely under the bus. It's an ominous development, folks, because if you can't see what's coming, and I'm also addressing um, basically the concerns of the Tea Party supporters here, because that is going to be your problem as well in the future. 
The Commission's mandate was to deal with the country's fiscal problems. Since Social Security is legally prohibited from ever spending more than it collected in taxes, it cannot, under the current law, contribute to the deficit. But because of backroom deals, that fund is being continuously raided. It is not kept out of the general budget. And that general budget includes our foreign policy, our warfare across the spectrum, and so on. So when people call Obamacare socialism, it's basically an oxymoron because what Obamacare did was to create a mandate for people to buy into a privatized system, and if they don't do it, they're going to be penalized for it. And it is a huge sellout to big corporations, I might add. And it's not going to work in, uh, to your benefit at all. So to call Obamacare socialism is essentially idiotic because it is exactly the opposite of socialism. Socialism means that the people contribute to the fund and then they can take their funds out of it. This is privatization run amok. Basically, we have been told under Obamacare that our own government can no longer negotiate fees with pharmaceutical companies and so on in order to bring costs down. Yet, this very same thing in the mass media is being portrayed as socialism when it's actually the exact opposite. It is, it's corporatism run amok. You know, if, if you have not studied world history by now, I mean, I'm sorry, maybe, maybe you need to catch up on that, but it, and all these labels become meaningless anyway, but Please, look it up. Supposedly, okay, in an ideal situation, our government is supposed to represent us, we the people. And everybody knows at this point that we're not being represented anymore. So this is why we have this huge backlash. Because people know something is wrong. And our founding fathers warned us against the financial sector taking over our entire country. But yet we have people listening to Fox News and all other networks, you know, basically listening to the same damn mantra over and over again that the corporate elites are going to rescue your ass. You need to understand one thing about corporations. Fundamentally, corporations are designed to make a profit for their shareholders. And as long as the people of the country are not the major shareholders in those corporations, that there is nothing to prevent those corporations from taking uh, a completely different view from you, which means they are going to make a profit for their major shareholders, which, which, which is not you. It's, it's the global financial elite. And they have no uh, loyalty to any country, to any kind of national concerns, to, to the people in, uh, of any nation whatsoever. They, could gig, they couldn't give a shit as long as their profits and their own pockets rise to the top. And they themselves know that the system is, is essentially flawed and it's, it's on the verge of collapse, which is why they're going in for the kill. You know, social reforms didn't just come about uh, because uh, of people protesting mass movements and all of that. That was all part of it. Believe me, that was all part of it. But at least at that stage, 
you know, 200 years ago, the elites had enough sense to know that people would eventually revolt against this if they didn't tone down their policies which were against the majority of the population. Now, there are no limits to this anymore, thanks to globalization. Globalization ushered in an age where workers and ordinary people are pitted against each other in every nation, in every country, in order to compete for some sort of continued uh, growth in the economy, which benefits really no one in the end. Not at this point. We're destroying the goddamn planet in the process. And people know this and they are frustrated as hell. And we need to stop cooperating with this, with this flawed system. It's just, I, I mean, our elections are a sham. If you think you still have a republic, or what I would call a democratic republic, you're, you're living in a, in a fantasy world. We can't make things better until people come together. And no, it's not just about individual freedoms, okay? Individual freedoms, you know, as far as everything you do individually in your bedroom or whatever. That's completely besides the point. The point is people need to come together because nobody can live without somebody else in the end. We need to cooperate because... because on some level, all of us are dependent on each other, whether we like it or not. This entire mantra of Ayn Rand and, and individual liberty and rational thought and rational, the mantra goes, rational self-interest. Have you ever seen any human being that actually had national, rational self-interest in mind? I can tell you right now from my own perspective, there's probably not too many rational things um, in my own background. So what makes Ayn Rand think that the whole of humanity is completely rational in terms of their self-interests? I mean, this, this is utopia. It's total utopia. People will do whatever they need to do in order to survive. And sometimes that, those survival tactics are not rational. They aren't. 